Welcome to Car Design Academy, where we help aspiring designers master the skills and technology necessary to succeed as an automotive designer through live, online training and personal mentoring. Today we're going to start to talk about the basics of rendering, which is really just uh, learning to master form through light and shadow. Uh, just using the pencil and paper, we're going to learn how to define a light source and to express a shape or form. And we're going to use a, a variety of basic shapes to start off with, and then we'll progress to how to render vehicles using light and shadow. So I'm going to start you doing some, some very primitive, very basic shapes. Um, we're going to go back to some of the shapes that we started before, like we're going to do boxes and cylinders. Uh, we're also going to do a sphere, and then we're going to show you how that applies to a vehicle. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch uh, a simple cube. And then I'm not going to be worrying about vanishing points and all of that because I already know uh, that the vanishing points are off the page. So we're just going to do a simple equal sided cube. And now we're going to define a light source. And let's say the light source is coming in from, from the upper right. So assuming that the light is hitting from this angle, our brightest surface is going to be the top, followed by uh, the right-hand surface, and then the left-hand surface will be the darkest. So uh, that's how we're going to render it. So I'm going to go ahead and color in the dark side. This will be the side that's in shadow. And then we'll make the right side also in shadow, but less, less dark. And then the top surface, which is fully illuminated. So if we go from, from light to dark, that would be one, two, and three. Now, if we were to add a bit of a cast shadow at the ground level, again, assuming that the sun is coming in from, from, from this angle, you'd probably see we'll probably see something like this. So if I, if I just trace the path of the sunlight, uh, I'm going to get a shadow, something like this. And we're going to just kind of fade that out. Give it a little bit of atmosphere. So you can make the shadow point in whatever direction you want, depending on where the light source is heading. But if you want to have that shadow be consistent with the direction of the light source, and get that nice uh, ground read. A cast shadow is a great tool to do that. So the next thing I'm going to sketch is a cylinder. And a cylinder is really much more similar to the body of a vehicle uh, because it has that rounded shape on the side, but it has kind of a um, sectioned off front and rear. So we're going to start with a basic cylinder. We're going to draw some, we're going to draw some ellipses. So we're going to first kind of set the path of the cylinder. And we'll set the uh, major axis. We'll draw our ellipsis. So if we're going to render this cylinder and we have the light source coming in from the same position, I'm going to draw a very, th very thin line here just about where the horizon line would be. If we're just trying to express a simple form, uh, we're going to be looking at the ground and the sky. So if you think of every object being a mirror of its environment, um, 
then you're going to see a representation of that environment in the object as reflecting the ground, the horizon, or the sky. If we're doing this as a, a non-glossy surface, then we're just going to simply shade it in, in a gradation. We'll just like build it up slowly. And you can see I'm allowing the, the ground to get a little bit lighter at the very bottom. And that's because there will be some reflection of the ground plane in the object at the very, very bottom, assuming the sun is illuminating the same ground plane. Okay, and then since, since the end of the cylinder is in shadow, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and darken that the same way we did the, the cube. I'm just drawing a little bit of a cast shadow to help ground the object. So what if the object is reflective? Well, reflection um, gives us even more of a mirror of its environment. So I'm going to go ahead and draw another cylinder. I'll draw a smaller one this time. And if you remember, we have a horizon, a sky, and a ground. So we're going to have our sky tone, our horizon, and the ground. Only this time, because this is a mirror of its environment, we're going to see a really hard, a hard line representing the horizon. And then slowly get lighter as we get closer to the, the very bottom of the cylinder. And then the same thing up here, the sky tone. If you look at the sky, it's the deepest blue when you look directly above, but then it fades to like almost a white at the horizon. And that's because of the atmosphere gets thicker. So we're going to, we're going to fade from a deep, a deep sky tone to a, a light horizon. So this is this is a little bit different than um, than the sunlight hitting and illuminating this part of the cylinder because because in this case it's it's a non glossy surface so it's just re, it's just going to reflect a, a soft sort of a soft hot spot um, that is where the surface is facing toward the light but here in the fully reflective object. You're going to be just reflecting the sky tone, and you may see a little, a little spot of sunlight at the very top there. But again, this, this side of the cylinder will be in darkness again, so we're going to go ahead and color that in. So the next shape we're going to draw is a sphere, and a sphere has no, no hard edges whatsoever. So a cylinder, you know, cube is all hard edges. The cylinder has a hard edge at the beginning and the end, but a, but a sphere has no hard edges whatsoever. So we're going to draw a couple of spheres. Again, with the same light source. And we're going to do one that's glossy and one that's non-glossy. And it's going to be just, just a soft gradation all around. We just build it up slowly. 
you can see I'm using the side of my pencil quite a bit because the side of the pencil gives a nice soft gradation. And I just build it up really slow. And I'm really moving towards that full white hot spot where the, where the light source is. And we might see a little bit of a cast shadow on the ground here. Now, if we're gonna do a fully reflective sphere, now I'm gonna have a much more defined horizon line. You can see if, if we're looking down on the sphere, we're gonna, the horizon will be more elliptical. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with the hard, the hard edge of the horizon and then slowly fade to a slightly lighter tone at the very bottom. Again, we're gonna build this up very slowly. And then we're gonna see a sky tone that's at its deepest point directly above. We might see a little sunspot there. And just build it up slowly. Do our ground shadow. And lastly, we're going to do uh, just a quick side view of a vehicle. We're just going to see how, how these principles align with a vehicle. So I'm just going to draw a quick little sports coupe. And we're going to see it, if we're going to do a non-reflective vehicle, we're going to see it fade from dark to light, back to, back to dark. But then if we wanted to make it more reflective, we just put a hard edge through the middle, add that really hard horizon line. And that deep sky tone. Then it starts to look much more reflective and, and chrome-like. And what we're really doing is we're taking the, the surface of the vehicle and reflecting the world around it. So if you think about how each of those surfaces is interacting with each other and, and you express that as a mirror of the outside world. That's what rendering is. It's really applying a, a mirror image of the outside world, light, shadow, and reflectivity into the shape of a vehicle in order to describe its form. And so every vehicle is really just a combination of cubes, cylinders, and spheres put together and with blends and fillets in between. And that's really how you express a vehicle. And so how you, how you define the, the, the form through light, shadow, and reflectivity, um, is, it's very important that you understand how to, to put dark areas, light areas, in order to really make that form read um, 
as, as believable and realistic. If you're looking to take your car design career to the next level, you need a mentor who can show you the way. Go to www.cardesign.academy and book a free discovery call. We can help you map out a strategy to master the skills and technology necessary to succeed as an automotive designer through live, online training, and personal mentoring. Whether you're just starting out on the journey or you're looking to level up, subscribe to our channel and be sure to follow us on Instagram at cardesign.academy.